Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday. It's Wednesday, April 10th, 2024. And so good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see you this morning. Welcome. It's in the solarium today because the sun, the sun is up. This is so exciting. So yes, come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Brenda. It's good to see you this morning. Good morning, Laurel. Good morning. Yes, as you're all coming in, I hope you have your coffee. Good morning, Karen. I have not quite had enough time to make my coffee this morning. Good morning, uh, Donna, and good morning, Louise. Rob, it's going to be a great day. Yep, Elizabeth, it's going to be a great day. Yep, yep. So, yes, good morning. Good morning, Carol. It's going to be a good day. Yep. Good morning, Penny. Good morning. Oh, yes. So as you're all coming in, good morning, Paul and Sue. It is Him Wednesday. Yeah. It is Him Wednesday. So as um, as I was getting ready for today, I knew that I was on for Devos this morning solo. And so I actually had put a song uh, in my, uh, my schedule to say, hey, this is what I want you to do. And then yesterday a completely different song started going through my head. And I was like, hey, where did that come from? And so it's just been like, that was a bird that just hit my window. That's sad. Let's carry on. <laughs> um, anyways, this song was literally pinballing around my head, just like that bird pinballing off my window. And uh, so then I, I said, hey, S-I-R-I-A, because if I say it right now, she'll come on, uh, play this song for me. And, and I actually had a copy of it in my library. And I was like, oh, this is good. Uh, yes, the, the bird did fly away. It's over in the tree recovering. So uh, the song is called Love Lifted Me. And... It was written in about 1905 um, by James Rowe and Howard E. Smith. And what is so interesting about uh, this song is it was co-written. Um, James wrote the words and Howard wrote the music. And uh, as I was doing a wee bit of research, it said that they went back and forth. One would write a line and the other would write a music, would write the line of music. And what... Um, was even more interesting than that was that Howard E. Smith had arthritis in his hands and his friends were often marveled or had often marveled at the fact that he could play the piano as well as he did. And so James and Howard wrote this song called Love Lifted Me. And I just, I love the image of this man with gnarled hands sitting down to the piano creating a song of worship to the lord right it's not like a woe is me song it actually talks about the depth of of their own sin and what got them out of it and i just so often we can get on put on the woe is me and and it's songs like this and stories like this that I'm like, okay, Jen, <laughs> love lifted you, right? And uh, so let me, let me share with you the words to this song. It said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shores, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea, heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now safe am i and the chorus goes like this love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me and so it's very interesting that it doesn't say works. It doesn't say being good enough. In fact, it's nothing of this person's own strength that lifted him out of his sinfulness. It was love. 
And in 1 John 4, 7, it says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son um, to die. Right? That's 1 John 4. Let me just read it to you. 1 John 4. The beginning of... Let's just see that. 1 John 4. All right. It says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. And uh, John 15 goes on to say greater love has no one than this that would lay down his life for a friend and John 3 16 right for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him uh, would not perish but have everlasting life so it's it's love God's great love for us that saves us what is man that you're mindful of him the son of man that you know you take notice of him right uh, second verse says, all my heart to him I give, ever to him I cling, in his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing, love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs, faithful, loving service to, to him belongs. So that line, right, love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not rude. It is not proud. It is not self-seeking. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always hopes, always trusts, always perseveres. Love never fails. The love of God is right and i pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp right how high and wide and long and deep is the love of god that is in christ jesus and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of god so when we start to understand the depths of God's love and, and live out of that, we will actually have fullness of life. When, real, when we realize it's not based on anything that we do, but uh, right, that we have the fullness of life, but on everything that Christ has done, then that's like, oh, wow. Let me see. Let me read you the third verse. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He, your savior, wants to be, be saved today. A couple lines that I love out of this verse. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. John Wesley would say he saves to the uttermost. There is no part of our life that is beyond the touch of Jesus, right? When we surrender that area to him, he can save it. He can wash it white as snow. He can redeem it. He can restore it, but he needs us to surrender it to him. There is nothing beyond his touch. There's no thought pattern. There's no uh, habit. There's no sin. He saved us, not because of the righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy, right? Because of his great love for us, Jesus saves to the uttermost. There's no person, right? that God doesn't love. We might have people in our life where we're like, oh, there's no possible way that they could, that they would turn to Jesus. Not true. Jesus completely saves. Completely, completely. We just need to 
hand them or hand ourselves over to the Lord. He, your Savior, wants to be, right? He wants to save us. He wants to save us. He wants to save us, right? And then the command is, well, then be saved today, right? We just need to turn to Jesus. So I'm like, okay, Jen, what areas in your heart, in your mind, in your habits, right? need to be saved today. Like I'm already saved. I've been I've been set free from the penalty of sin. I am saved. But there's areas in my life that Jesus still would like to work on. And I'm like I have to believe according to scripture that he can save and deliver me from those areas too. Romans um Romans seven at the end has this wonderful passage because it says that Paul is wrestling, right? Wrestle, wrestle, wrestle uh, with his old self. And he says, um, what a wretched man I am who will rescue me from this body of death. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Because it goes on to say, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, right? Yep. <sighs> Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Uh, Psalm 40 says, I... <clears throat> I'll read it to you. I'm like, I have parts of it in my head. Psalm 40 says, doop, doop. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. So he can lift you out of whatever pit you find yourself in today. He'll do it. We just need to turn to him. As Donna said, all we need to do is come. Just come. Just turn to him. Even if you don't have the words, you can just cry out to Jesus. You can just cry out to Jesus. And sometimes that's all you have. And that's all Jesus needs. It's good news. That is good news. And so let me pray. When nothing else could help, you lifted me out of your great love. Oh, Lord, remind us that there is no part of us today that is beyond your saving. There is no person in our life today that is beyond your saving. For nothing is impossible with you. Oh Lord, we need to experience. Paul prayed, I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp. So Lord, may your Holy Spirit help us to grasp how long and high and wide and deep is your love. That is in Christ Jesus. And this love, it says, it surpasses knowledge. So, Lord, we're not really going to understand how great your love is for us, how great your mercy is towards us, uh, the depth to which you forgive. So, Lord, we ask for a glimpse of it today just this deep settling in of your spirit to say I'm with you I love you and I have saved you help us today Lord to experience this great love in your name amen I was sinking deep in sin, 
far from the peace-filled shore. So, are you experiencing peace today? That's a great question, right? Because if you're not, then maybe there's something there that you need to give over to the Lord so you can experience that peace as he lifts you up, right? Because then the master of the sea heard my despair and cry. And from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. So if you're not experiencing that peace today, you need to surrender it to the Lord. You need to surrender it to the Lord. Let him lift you up out of it. Put your feet on a firm foundation and then give him thanks. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. Remember to like, share, go outside and help your community experience Christ. Bye.